Hello there, my name's Ian, I'm a floor layer. I've been doing this for about 30 years now, and what I'm doing today is I'm laying an engineered board oak floor. What we do first on concrete floors is we put a, a DPM polythene onto the screed first to cover it in case you get any moisture coming up through the floor. Then we put an underlay over top of it, which is just an acoustic one to try and dead, dead, deaden the noise down. And that goes over top of that, and then on top, we lay our wood floor, which is a click system, meaning we don't have to glue it, we just have a tongue either side, and it locks in as that. And now I'll show you the piece I'm going to do now. I'll move you off a piece. This is the piece I'm cutting off to put on the end of the bow. This is what we call the start. So this will start my next line so we keep as much of the waist down as possible. And as I said before, I just show it up to the board before I click her in and give it a tap. So she locks into the board in front of it. Then this one that I've just cut off, I start a new line. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. How long have you been doing this, Ian? Oh, it's about 30 years altogether. Just just under. And what do you like most about the job? Well, it's creating something. You know, you walk into an empty place, and obviously, as you say, when you finish, you've actually created a room. Hmm. It's, it's good. It is good. There's no doubt about it. And how's the job changed in the last 30 years? Um, yeah, quite a lot. Obviously, we've got more, more, more products to work with. Better products or not as good? A lot of them are good. Yeah, some you do get some that are a little bit... It's, it's more aggravation, to be honest with you, because they're so technically, they make them so technically that this, it's impossible to really fit them. But this click and click and click, uh, this click, click technique seems quite simplistic. It's brilliant. Yeah, it is. And, it, and the thing, beauty of it is, as well, is, is when you click it together, it, you know it's locked. And so the whole floor is moving together to so it expands. Whereas originally, when you just had the tongue and groove, they moved individually and used to open up. And of course, you had a lot of aggro where they opened up and you get moisture into them and things like that. Whereas this, it's more clock and you get better joints. Mm. It locks them together better as well. Okay. Brilliant. And, and what, what you haven't explained on camera is this is actually a floating floor. Can you explain what a floating floor means? Well, basically, this is a floating floor. And what the floating floor basically means is we're not gluing it down at all. It's just laying loose on the floor. So it's one solid piece. And so as you walk on it, you, it, it doesn't bounce, but you can feel a little bit of movement. And so the whole floor can move if, if, because wood expands. So the whole floor, while they're just individually moving, the whole thing will move together. And so that's, we leave an expansion joint around the outside so the wood can move around. It's so very rarely it moves more than about five cents, if that. So that's the expansion joint. That's the expansion joint. joint. And that's covered by skirting or in the door, as in the doorway, we cover instead of, because we can't get skirting there, what we do is we put a wooden trim. We leave an expansion joint. That's quite a big expansion joint there. That is, that, is that a typical size? That is for the trim. Because the trim ah, itself is quite a wide trim. So the trim actually the sits actual in there. The actual expansion itself is this. But this, because it's a solid wood, we need a bit of meat behind it. Yeah. yeah so it can get kicked and broken. That's right. And then what happens is, is we cut the underlay away. Yeah. And then we'll glue that onto the floor. And yeah. that still gives it enough for the the wood to slide. And that can, so that's not glued, is that glued to the wood then? No, no, it's just glued to the screen itself and the, the actual... So it can all move. So the, the wood still move underneath it. So if you, if you glue it to the wood, then obviously the wood's got nowhere to go. Whereas you only glue the trim to the floor. So really you're just t taking advantage of the natural properties of the wood. Exactly. Yeah. So if you go with it, 
and you're not fighting it, you're no, going to be all right. That's right. So for a young person at school who's just uh, about to choose his GCSEs and might be thinking, what am I doing here? M might be looking at a career instead. What would you say to that young person in terms of a career, in terms of fitting a floor? Yeah, go for it. Because uh, so the beauty of it is, obviously, we're, we're working with wood here. So obviously, uh, if you've got some wood working skills, brilliant. Yeah, it will help you. But any sort of flooring, because it's a variation every day. Yeah, you can be doing a vinyl tile or cushion vinyl, which is a, the big vinyl sheet vinyl. Yep. So each day, so there's a variation of jobs you're doing each day. It's very interesting. You're getting about different places each day, or sometimes two or three days at different places. And to be honest with you, it isn't a bad living. Yeah, if you so you can earn a decent crust. You can earn a decent crust. There's a, obviously, you've got a lot of people that go self-employed. Yeah. Which, you know, What's the advantage of that? The good thing about that, obviously, is, is you, you, being your own boss, you, know, you can ch pick and choose where you How often you work or not. And exactly. But the only trouble is, is if work gets a little bit thin, thin you, you're basically sort of scratching about. Yeah. Whereas, obviously, I work for a company, so they've got to guarantee me. There's nothing stopping you doing a bit of the weekend for yourself, yeah, exactly. is it? I do a little bit on my own as well, so obviously it's, it's a bit of extra, extra pocket money. Pocket money. Yeah. yeah, extra pocket money. But then you've always got the guarantee that you know, they've got to pay you. So if you were looking for a young lad, say you are uh, self-employed permanently, yeah. you're looking for a young lad, um, what kind of qualifications and skills would you be looking for? Well, just, just um, general knowledge, you know, common sense, to be honest with you. you so you can I mean? teach them how to do yeah, this? Yeah, because a lot of it is you know, you, you learn on site. You know, obviously, we show you how to do it, but it's, it is a hands-on job. So you get better the more you yeah. do it? Oh, yeah, yeah. You learn as you go along. You know, as I say, I've been doing it for my nine or 30 years. And I am meeting lads, and I am do, learning little tricks. From them? From them. So yeah. you never stop learning? No, 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 you never stop learning. You, you know, you, you always, it's basics, yeah, there is basics of it, how to, how to put a floor, but there are always little tricks that you can learn, quicker ways of doing it, or better ways of doing it. You never learn, never stop learning. Never Fantastic. Stop learning. And what kind of apprenticeship would you be looking for? A year, two years, or well, to, to do all floors? A lot of it, oh yeah, a lot of it, you are, um, you, some of them could be sort of like three or four years. So you're talking yeah, now about Carndine, you're talking you, about... Yeah, because well, you could lay in, as you say, when you're laying Carndine that, because it's a, a vinyl tile, that's one of the first things you get onto. Obviously, later on, you can sort of like more move into wood now. So this is a VIP job, this is an experience yeah, job. Yeah, as you say, you need to, because if you've got, let's say, woodworking um, skills, yeah, great, because obviously you'll be able to pick it up, how to use a saw blades and things like that, because obviously... Quite you know, dangerous. It, it is, you do some dangerous tools. And then when we go into actual, like, if you've seen in hospitals now, what we call cap and cove, where we take it up the wall, yeah. that is a little bit later on, because obviously that's a bit more... Is that literally one piece when it goes yeah, up the wall? Yeah, take it up the wall. Sometimes they, if you, you'll see in some place they have what we call a weld. Hmm. There's joins in them and they're, they're heat welded and things like that. And obviously that takes a little bit of experience to do because obviously you work with a hot air gun yeah. and you've got to use it at a certain speed. What is that product for the cap and cove? What is that product that they put that, on the wall? It's, um, you use, it's like auto safety flooring or you can use something like polyfloor, a material called polyfloor. Um, usually it's the ultra one because that's usually the non-slip and it's hard to wear, is it? Hard to wear, yeah. Which which you usually use in um, hospitals and um, toilets. You and could even like. use that in commercial kitchens. You can use it in commercial kitchens. The thing is with it though, is sometimes there's not a very choice of um, colours and things like that. It does look quite industrial, yeah. to be honest with you. But they are bringing out some. And more and more companies are bringing out better look my wood effect ones and things like that. So you can have that in a wet room then, really? You can have that in a wet room, yeah. It'll cope with all the heat and the, the yeah. temperature and the damp. Oh, yeah. yeah, with the Antico, sorry, um, can't, um, Ultra Safety Floyd, I brought one out where you don't need to stick it on the floor. Wow. What you do is you just stick it to the wall with where you cove it up. And the idea is, is you still weld it in that, but it lays flat itself. And it's heavy it's, enough to find its own form, is it? Exactly, and not only that, is they say, because obviously a lot of time is lost through waiting for floors to dry, concrete floors, this, they reckon it holds back 99% moisture. So if you did have a floor that's too wet to lay on with a glue, wow. you can still lay this, cover it up the wall, and it still stop the moisture from coming up and damaging the floor. Could you not use it as a shower tray then? You could use it in shower Yeah, we use it, yeah. We, you, we've done it in sort of like um, old people's residential places, you know, bathrooms that lot. We use it in the trays. And then once we do glue, in the tray itself, but we've, we've laid it loose up around the sides and things. So there's like no that. limit to your imagination in terms of flooring these days? Oh no, oh no, no. They're, they're more and more, as I say, they're, they're, there are a lot more products coming out on the market as well. You so know, it's, it's, it's never gets a boring job then? No, no, no. Well, that's a good of it, yeah, because obviously you do get times where you might be on a job sort of four or five weeks and real big jobs and it does get a bit monotonous. 
But like this, you know what, two days and I'm done and I'm off. Off somewhere so else. Never really, yeah, and then tomorrow I will say, I may be laying a vinyl cushion vinyl, so I'm not doing the same thing again. But it's yeah. very rewarding, isn't it? Because like you say, you can start in a house that looks knackered, yeah. and in two days you can leave it looking world class like yeah. this. And well, you've done that, haven't you? Yeah. You've actually created that effect. Again, as you say, yeah, because yeah, 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 obviously when people come to look at the material, they just get a sample board. And then once you can actually transform it onto them and get their eyes to sort of mm. see exactly what they've been sort of like, been talking talked to about. It, so you don't need a you don't need to be a fully qualified carpenter, you don't need to have you could actually yeah. learn on the job. Yeah, yeah, basically that's what I've done. I, I that's how I started off. I just started off I, I went for an advert as a floor layer and I just started off and they said that what skills you've got to like I've done woodwork at school. And they said, Well at least you can know how to use a saw, basically. And so I went there and as I say they teach you on the job. And most companies would take those people on today, would they? Uh, hopefully, yeah. You know, you know, would your company take an apprentice on? I would have thought so, yes. I wouldn't say definitely yes, but I, I would have thought so, because there is a dying trade in a sense. You, mm. you look out for young lads doing floor laying, and it's very hard to find them. But you're looking for an attitude and approach, aren't you? Yeah. And common sense, like you've already alluded to. I do feel like, the, the, the thing is, as you say, you know, I'm a bit of an old boy here, but the attitude has changed a lot for the fellas. Yeah, they want to earn a certain amount of money before they even sort of like... Wow. Walk. You you, there's I mean? no sitting on the red carpet until you've earned your place, is exactly. it? Exactly, yeah. If, if it, you've got to start from the bottom, basically. And it isn't. It's, it's, yeah, it doesn't take you a long time to learn. And of course, if you're a quick uh, learner, you'll pick this up in no business. Mm. No business at all. But know. the experience comes from putting the hours in. Exactly. Yeah, you yeah. learn on the job. What's, yeah. what's, what's the favourite part of the, your, your job? What's the favourite product? I, what I do like laying um, Candine because especially when they do the um, designs, you know, because obviously you, you are creating a pattern. Matching it up. Yeah, you, this is it. Yeah, because you, you cover the tile and you'll cover the trim and you'll have what we call a board around the outside and lay diagonal in the middle with a trim around it. Mm. And when you walk away, you have created a pattern. Nice. Uh, you, you can get a lot of the ones with the wood effect, herringbone. And of course, as I say, you've got the board around the outside, a little trim, and it creates... So that allows you to use your artistic flair as well. Again, as you say. It, and it's good if you know how to do jigsaws. <laughs> that really helps. So, so far, in the last 12 minutes, you've talked about lots of skills, which I would call soft skills, common sense, uh, hard skills. You've not talked once about academic skills. So for those people out there that are at school who feel they're not academic, what would your final word to them be? Do this. Yeah, you, you, you know, it, as I say, you don't really need to be an academic to do this. You, know, you, you learn on a job and you've got to talk what you're going on. And you've got the freedom, you get a van. That's right, yeah, obviously later on. If, and again, obviously with a lot of companies, once you can get a licence, you get yourself a licence, you get out on your own, then you can earn the money. Brilliant. All the time, you know, if, you know, if you're not, then you're just basically just, just sort of like a boy, you fetch and carry. You'll get that to start with. You might find all you're doing is sweeping up and you're lifting things, carrying them. But then what you're doing is you're watching as well. So if you think you're just sweeping up and carrying and fetching, yeah. then you've got the wrong idea, haven't exactly. you? Exactly. You've got yeah. to look and learn. It, you, exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you will get taught. You know, if, if you don't put it in, if you don't sort of like give the impression that you are interested, then you won't go. Because right? the, the lads that you work with will need somebody who can sort of like help them along. So what you're saying out there is, if you want to get on the tools and if you want to actually have a, a skill or be a, a tradesman of whatever sort, get involved, look and learn, and basically what you're saying is for the first six, 12 months, you're probably going to be teaching yourself by the questions you ask yes. and getting stuck in and asking if you can have a go. And I, and I always say, never worry about asking. It's never a dumb question. You know, the only way you're going to learn is to ask. Ask a question. If the fellow you're working with so when it gets fed up with it, okay, but if you don't ask, you don't learn. They say that, don't they? Nothing yeah. for the dumb, sadly, yeah. but um, uh, can I just say thank you for today, and uh, thank you for doing our floor, and thank you for doing this uh, video uh, footage, this vlog post for uh, all the young people out there who might see it and be inspired by you to actually go into flooring. Uh, thank you, Ian. No worries, thank you.